Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, I want to apologize for the technical difficulties. We was having a little technical difficulties earlier. Uh, my name is uh, Samuel Davis, and I'm here from Port Townsend, Washington. i ready to give a powerful and exciting Bible study tonight. And, and thank you all for tuning in. And again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. You know, the, the, the MSC and, of course, the devil hinders sometimes. You know, technical difficulties but we hear it now and I want to thank Pastor Lannis and Marlene for giving me this opportunity to teach the study. I've been waiting to teach the study for a long time and now I finally got the opportunity to uh, praise God. The devil couldn't hinder. So uh, thank you all for tuning in and uh, please uh, actually uh, let me know that you're seeing this video by giving a thumbs up, a like or a comment down below say hey I'm we see your video live and so we know that it's broadcasting right and I want to say I love you all and appreciate 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 you all and those in San Diego as well uh, love you all and I miss you all and uh, I'll be back home soon about probably four months and thank you for Pastor Lance and Mylene like I mentioned earlier uh, they're out of Houston Texas and we have powerful Sunday worship Service out of Houston, Texas, usually at 11 o'clock in the morning and a central time, and led by Pastor Lance and Mylene. And again, thank you for this opportunity to teach a Wednesday night Bible study uh, live from Port Townsend, Washington State. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna wait two more minutes for everyone to else to get online. I see a couple people there. Thank you, Mom Myrna. Thank you, Atlanta Warriors of Christ. Say they see me. Thank you glad to be a part and just wait two more minutes for everyone else to get online and and we get started on the tonight's Bible study we'll be using the King James Version Bible the unfallible word of God and, and uh, I'm again I'm glad to be part of this to teach this take time out uh, to do God's will and teach God's word to all and to myself as well title of the study enduring unto the end and that's going to be what we're going to go over okay In about one more minute we get started Okay, everyone, uh, thank you for your patience and thank you for your understanding with the technical difficulties. And uh, we want to get, I want to get started with this exciting Bible study. And, and before we do, let's uh, bow our heads if we may and close our eyes and give reverence to God. But dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your mercy on our lives this week and for always. And thank you for the blessings that you've given us. God, be with those that are seeking your face for help in all kinds of things, from healings to guidance uh, to support. God, you know all the, our requests, and you could grant those requests because you're the living God. You're the only God that, that we could come to in prayer. And God, thank you for this opportunity to teach your word, God, to learn your word, and God, to be gathered together for your sake to learn about you and what you'd like for us to do, have for us to do. Jesus, your holy name, we give you thanks. Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, thank you all, everyone, and I want to get started for the Bible study. I titled this study, en Endurance, uh, Enduring Unto the End. And when you talk about endurance, uh, uh, what comes to mind when, you, when you're enduring something? Uh, for me, enduring is like, it's like a race. It's like running a, a like a 5k marathon a three mile race you know let's just say that you had this multi-billionaire he he has everyone in his race and he says hey listen uh i don't care how fast you run in the race or how slow you run uh as long as you don't cheat as long as you don't take shortcuts as long as you don't stop running just keep running uh when that and, and at the end when you finish the race uh you get two million dollars in cash uh now, wouldn't that be something? That'd be something to endure, right? The person, people running that race, they are, 
they'll run fast or they'll run slow or however, but they'll keep running. You know, but how sometimes you know your, your legs start cramping up, uh, your stomach starts hurting, or you might have a headache, you get tired, but yet, yet you are endure because you want that two million dollars once you cross the finish line. Well, I walk with Christ. It's like a race. It's always being compared to as a race to the finish line. We some run fast, some run slow. Some get weary sometimes. Some people get thirsty, but. Uh, but what we do, what they do, they keep running. They keep living for Christ until the end, to the end of the race, you know, to, to the end of our life, or, or when Christ comes back, so we can get the the prize at the end, heaven. Our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life to live with Christ for eternity. But the key thing in all of that is we have to endure. We have to keep running the race. Uh, in this Bible study, I, I, I want to explain about enduring in Christ and how and how to keep going oh, when things get, when we get tired when we get weary when we get frustrated sometimes or when you have lack of we have lack of faith sometimes you know and how to not give up to endure endure with joy and that's why I want to go over it. and got it broke down in four parts the first part is be endurance itself. You know, talk about endurance. So, let's. You may let's go to our first scripture, Hebrews chapter twelve, verse two. Hebrews chapter twelve, verse two. This is in the New Testament. We're using the King James Version Bible, the infallible Word of God. Nothing added, nothing taken away. God's pure Word straightforward in the English language. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 Looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God in enduring uh, let's look at the example of Jesus Christ what he set forth uh, Jesus Christ was on a mission he came to save souls he came to show the way of salvation to make the way of salvation you know via water baptism and washing away our sins you know it, and it wasn't just uh, just him coming down to teach you know he had to Put up a lot of stuff and then people wanted to stone him people called him the devil you know these pharisees wanted to crucify him and and all that stuff but but jesus had a mission uh he he had and he had a mission to teach his word to teach salvation to teach a better way of life which is through him and and because of that because he he saw the end result of what he came down to earth to do he endured the cross, you know. He endured that the persecutions that he faced. He endured being nailed to the cross, you know, being bathed at, mocked, and and he arose the third day and and paved the way to salvation for us all and to remit our sins away. Uh, for us I mean, here, uh, you no, know, for the joy that's set before us, the joy of having Christ in our lives to give us victory to give us salvation to give us healing and ultimately to save us when he returns back uh, that that joy is in us to in, to endure the, the things we go through here in this life and in which ultimately we look to Jesus for the example of endurance so if we ever have any any low time because sometimes low times will come you know uh just remember the joy that's set before us and to look on the Jesus example of how he endured and for us to endure. The next scripture I'd like to go to is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. I'm oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 7. Still in the New Testament.
Yeah, this chapter 13 in 1 Corinthians uh, is the charity chapel, uh, chapter, as we call it. Uh, it talks about charity, the whole chapter. But uh, we're going to focus on verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 Charity serveth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity faunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Uh, like how the first seven said, endure of all things. No, that's what part of having charity, part of having God's love in our hearts and His salvation in our hearts, is for us to have charity and to endure things. You know, endure that negative coworker at work. Endure sometimes when your husband or wife gets on your nerves and so forth. Endure, you know certain negative situations around about you. Why, why do we endure that? Because we, because of the love we have in our hearts, that God put us that love in our hearts to minister to people, to see people saved. Because when we have that charity and we endure the, those things I was just talking about, we get opportunities to minister to, to folks and we touch someone's life. You know, by you know, because we endure the, the negativity, you know, God will use us to minister to folks, you know, and not be like the world and just, you know, you know, bash someone the moment they cross us the wrong way or, you know, snap at people right off the bat and, you know, that kind of stuff. Having God's love in our hearts, having charity in our hearts causes for us to endure, endure negativity and use it as an opportunity to minister through patience and through God's direction. The uh, next scripture you'd like to go to is Mark chapter 4, 16 to 17. Mark chapter 4, uh, 16 to 17. Are you feeling me for this study? Uh, it's coming along pretty good. Endurance. As we go further into it, you'll get to get what I'm teaching here. Mark chapter 4, 16 to 17. And these are they likewise which are sown. Before I finish reading that, let's talk about the parable of the sword that the the gentleman went and sowed seeds. Some fell on good ground. Some fell on stony ground. Some fell among the thorns, and some fell by the wayside. And it explains about how what happens with each of the seeds that fell into the different areas, the different grounds. So but let's go into this one here. And let me go ahead and read again. And these are they which, uh, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves, and so endure for a, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. No, Jesus wants us to, to beware of that, of the word that we don't fall on stony ground. You know, yeah, we got saved and we was excited, pumped up, excited. Oh, yeah, God saved my soul. I'm happy. You be, but then when persecution or affliction start coming up because of our stand in Christ uh, sometimes we will get offended sometimes we're like hey you know when I'm living this Christian life you know it's easier for me you know when I wasn't saved and everything you know God doesn't want us to fall fall in that category he wants us to, en to endure whatever afflictions that may come our way whatever hardships might, that might come our way from time to time and, and don't give in don't give in to bitterness or or cold heartedness or else it, it'll 
make our hearts stony and we'll uh, and we are not be the Christian testimony that we ought, ought to be. So like again it's talk about endurance, you know. These people who fell on stony ground, uh they endured for a little bit but but the more the more the enemy fought against them for the stand for the gospel, the the more they became offended and dwindled away from from Christ and what he Christ would have them to do. So but you know, so Jesus don't want us to be in that stony ground. He wants to be on the good ground, being fruitful, doing his work, having faith in him, having believing in him and trusting in him and enduring afflictions and hardships with joy. Yeah. Next scripture, Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. Actually, I'm going to read verses 1 through 3 all together. Let's go ahead and read from 1 through 3 of 2 Timothy chapter 4. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Let's read verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Uh, let's read verse 5 also. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. No, a part, another part of enduring is enduring sound doctrine. No, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so is his truth, his word. Uh, he didn't change anything from what he's spoken. You know, his commandments is what his commandments are. Uh, no additions, no subtractions. And you know, the sound truth of him, of, of Jesus Christ. One God, one baptism, one way of living right before him. And, and you have all these other doctrines out there, you know, these other organizations that claim to be of God and so forth and but they don't but they you know, take a look they take away a little bit here and there from the word of God and wash it up to uh to please people to make people's lives easier and and that's not how God would have it to be. No, God wants us to endure the sound doctrine doctrine, the truth is of his gospel whether it, it hurts sometimes or not, you know. It's God's truth. It's easier to to just be dedicated to God just on one day only and everything. But but God's truth requires for us to love Him and serve Him every day, seven days a week, and and all the many other commandments that God has, which which is not grievous, like the Scripture says, they all for our own good and and for and to the end to save our souls. But God wants us to endure his truth, endure doing his, endure and doing his commandments, his work. You know, endure going out to minister to people on the base, like Pastor Goodell always does many for many, many years, for example. You know, to to give give our time, our effort, our resources, you know, all to, for the ministry to grow. All that and all in all is sound doctrine it's enduring sound doctrine no let's not turn our ears away from god's truth and and, and turn to the you know to the many false religions and misconceptions out there why it may be easy and pleasing to the flesh in the end it won't profit profit us anything 
if we, does, if we don't endure sound doctrine. Now, next scripture, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12 again. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 7 this time. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. It says, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth, chasteneth not? And uh, I remember Pastor Lannis, we went over, had us all to go over Hebrews 12, the whole chapter, you know, a few weeks back. And, uh, and we, we all told about what we got out of it. And, and ironically, believe it or not, uh, what, what I got out of the, that study, uh, that, that chapter was what I'm sharing by in chapter 7 here. Talking about but how, you know, God chastens us as sons, you know, when God corrects us. We endure the correction of God, the discipline of God. And why? Because we are his children, because he, he loves us. We got saved, we got baptized in his name. If God didn't deal with us when we do wrong or so forth, or whatever we need to do to correct things in our life, then we wouldn't be his children. He would just leave us to just do whatever. But... But God loves us. We're part of Him, and He has a work for us to do. And that's why he, he, God chastises us. You know, or our leaders, our pastors, chastise us. And, and, and it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So to endure, to endure, but you endure for our own good, for our own sake. And. That's what that's about. And uh, the next scripture, the next session we'd like to go over is the examples of endurance. Talk about people, examples of how people endured things in their life, you know, with the, through the power of God. And, uh, and the first scripture I'd like to go to in this section of the study will be is uh, Job, the book of Job, chapter 2, verse 7 through 10. And, it, and this is the second section of the study, which is called Examples of Endurance. And uh, as you know, by the way, uh, we've, been, uh, we've been teaching about the book of Job and going over different chapters of the book of Job to talk about his life and, and how he got the victory but let's turn to Job and see what you get out of Job when it comes to endurance. Job chapter 2. Verses 7 to 10. And uh, and let me give you a synopsis right quick of, of what's going on here with Job for those who don't know. Uh, Job was a great servant of God. He did God's work every single day and he, he avoided evil. It, he, he did good and pleased God greatly. And then the devil come up to God saying, hey, look, uh, you no, know, I'm going around two and four seeing who I can devour. And then God said, hey, look at my servant Job. He's doing all this good stuff for me and he's pleasing me and he's a great guy. And then the devil was like, oh yeah, well, if I do this and that to him, he's gonna curse you to your face. Well. That's obviously he, did, he didn't do that so let's read about something that happened to Job first in the chapter before this chapter 1 he lost his sons he lost his cattle his riches you know he lost his sons and daughters all in one day and and then he still was standing but so let's see what happens here in chapter 2 starting with verse 7 so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown and he took him a posture to scrape him himself with all and he sat down among the ashes then said his wife unto him doth thou still retain thy integrity curse God and die but he said unto her thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh what shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil and all this did not Job sin with his lips and as you read further in the book of Job, you know, he went through all this stuff, you know, he just 
you know, pleading out to God and, and but most of all, he was enduring. Uh, he, he was enduring that affliction. You know why? Because uh, this uh, first ten, a key scripture right here. He said, "Hey, what shall we receive good at the hand of God and not evil?" You see, uh, when we live in a righteous life before Christ, when we're doing His work and we're pleasing Him, you know, He's not gonna turn around and 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 persecute you and 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 bring all this and let your life be miserable and and painful and suffering and you know you're not going to just turn around and do all this evil stuff on you uh, job knew that that's common sense so he knew that you know it wasn't god that was doing that to him it was the devil doing that to him to, to stray him away from living for christ from being that testimony he was but and so guess what it didn't work all that stuff he lost his riches he felt he's lost his children he lost this and that and he had all this disease on him and and he still maintain his integrity he endured that because he know that it wasn't come from god it was come from the enemy trying to derail him from living for god and guess what when job endured that god blessed him god gave him double triple or whatever of all that he had and he had seven more sons and three more daughters and they was great and and then he lived for like a long long time even ap after that and not that and that's now that's an example of enduring unto the end. He endured. He got the victory from God. Smacked the devil right in his face, and he lived on for many years with more wealth than he had before the first time. And and you think God, God's not the. You think God's not the same God that he was, that he did that for Job today? But guess what? He's the same God today that can do that for our lives when we endure the, the afflictions that we endure for God's and his gospel state, sake he's going to reward us he's going to bless us he hears our prayers he hears our cries and he, know, he knows when we're weak he knows when we, we're tired he knows when we're weary and, and, he, and he knows how, and he knows how to deliver okay let's go to the next example Second Kings chapter 19 verses 10 through 19 it's talking about Hezekiah the king Hezekiah 2nd Kings chapter 19 verse 10 through 19 Let's give, give ourselves a moment to turn to it 2nd Kings 10 10 through 19 and uh and just to talk for a moment uh, did, uh uh, Hezekiah was being surrounded by this one king, this this one uh, Assyrian king that went around. He, he was some bad dude go around, you know. He defeated all these other countries, these other armies, and now he's coming up to to Hezekiah and coming up to Jerusalem, telling the people, "Hey, surrender to me, surrender to me, and uh, forget Hezekiah, forget God." Let's let's read this. Uh, start with verse ten of Second Kings ten. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on for a second. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I mean, Second Kings 19. My apology. Second Kings 19, 10 through 19. Second Kings 19. I mean, 10 through 19. Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jer Jerusalem shall not be lit, delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan and Haran and Resif and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad and the king of the city of Sepharvaim of Hena and Iva. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hands of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwell between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the nations of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, 
bow down thine ear and hear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which have sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the king of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, but there were no gods, but the word work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou uh, us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Okay, you got this moron king that's trying to uh, get Hezekiah and, the, and, and Israel to surrender to him. You know to be you no know, to surrender to him and you know stop living for God, stop serving God, and to and to serve Him and and uh, he's taunting him. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, this king. He was mighty. He beat a lot of armies, like we just said earlier. You know, he real bad dude, but he he can't mess with the wrong kingdom here. Can't mess with the people of God. And uh, how many times? Sometimes uh, we get approached. You know, spiritually speaking, hey, uh, you, you know, your that, that church you go to, man, they, it's a bunch of weird people. Why don't you just go to this church here or that? Or uh, why are you being Christian for? Why can't you just uh just live it up and live in sin and so forth? You know, all that little nag 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 stuff, you know. But but what? But what what did has guy do? He went and prayed before God. Hey God, give me strength. It, Give us victory, save what you know, deliver us from this, you know, from this mess. And now, how did what does it have to do with endurance? Well, it has a lot to do with it, I guess. You know, it's it'd been easier for Hezekiah to be like, okay, yeah, you know, you're right, uh, you know, you know, you're a real strong king, so you know, and sometimes God doesn't really move that fast, so uh, yeah, we'll surrender and. It could have been easy for him to give up, you know, this king coming to him over and over again, trying to do, scare him, trying to stir him up, him and the children of Israel trying to stir him up. And, but you no, know, Hezekiah turned unto God and, and that God took care of the situation. And so part of us for enduring, you know, we gotta look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith and, and endure. Until he, to the end, until God gives up and gives us the victory, you know. And you read later on in that chapter, uh, God whipped that king up. He, you know, he defeated that king. That king never even made it to Jerusalem because God, the God, the living God, who everyone knows is the God throughout all the earth, uh, he came through and gave us the victory, gave them the victory, and he gave us the victory. If only we are endure until the end. The next section. How do we endure? You know, we're gonna go over examples of how do, how do you endure? It's easy to say in, endurance is not just sitting there, you know, ooh, okay, I'm going through this and that, you know, but I endure and wait, you know. No, it's much more powerful than that. And uh it's a lot more power and victory in, in in endurance than just sitting down you know waiting for a miracle waiting for a breakthrough let's go to uh second samuel this old testament second samuel chapter 30 first this three to six. Second samuel chapter 30 verses three to six and uh no, sorry, first Samuel chapter 30, verse 3 to 6. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 3 to 6. Yeah. Second Samuel chapter 30. Second Samuel chapter 30, verse 3 to 6. Okay. Uh give us a moment. Okay, and give you a synopsis right quick again. In this 
in this scenario, uh, King David, uh, him and his men went out, went out in a battle, uh, so forth. And then when they came back there, uh, they saw the city was burnt down and their wives and children was taken away captive. And, uh, and the, and the people was like worried, like, oh man, my wife and my kids are gone. My wife and my kids are gone and everything. And, uh, oh, what do we do here? And, but let's read uh, 1 Samuel 33 to 6. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and all the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept till they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive Ahinom, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of the bold, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You see that uh, you had, you know, these people was upset, you know, because they had their wives and daughters and children, you know, stolen from them and had the city burnt up. And, you know, they wanted to stone David and. You know, it would have been easier for David to, be, to give up. Be like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm some, I'm a scumbag. It's all my fault. You know, what was me? And could have beat himself e up easily. He could have ran off. Oh, let me get out of here, man. These people gonna stone me. No, what he did, he was encouraging himself in God. Sometimes we gotta encourage ourselves in God whenever we have afflictions, or whenever we have good, bad times and everything. No, don't, no, don't beat ourselves up. Uh, don't. Don't run off, you know, woe is me, you know, and if there's no one there to encourage you in Christ, encourage yourself. Sing praise to God. Think of the good things he's done. Think of the victories he gave us. Yeah, there could be bad stuff going on, negative situations going on and so forth, but uh, just think of the good things that God done for us. Do something to encourage ourselves, you know, and then and God will move. Oh, and guess what? You know, you read further down, uh, uh, you know, King David went out, him and his men went out, and they fought that army that took away their wives and kids, and they got everything all back. See? You know, God moved. Next scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, 13 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, 13 to 18. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. How do we endure? We endure by taking the whole armor of God with us every day, praying always to God you know, for our needs, praying to minister praying for deliverance you know, praying to minister to someone having a helmet of salvation knowing that, that God saved us, that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life knowing that, that God would de you know, the, the shield of faith knowing that God, that God would deliver us, knowing that God would give us the victory knowing that God would bless our life when we're doing his work knowing that, that whatever affliction might come our way we know it's not from God and that God will give us the victory over that. Breastplate of, righteous, breastplate, plate of righteousness. A heart to love God and serve God. All that's your arm, our armor of God every day to help us endure, to help us finish running that race when our legs are cramped up. I'm just giving that example, but you know what I mean. When we worry, when we tired. The Psalms chapter next scripture, Psalms chapter 121, verse 1 through 2. 
how enduring. Talk about how do we endure? Uh, Psalms chapter one hundred one hundred twenty one. One hundred and twenty one of Psalms one twenty one verses one two two. It says here, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. When we have affliction, uh, whenever hard times come up, we look unto the heavens from whence cometh our help. God, Jesus Christ, who made heaven and earth, the God Almighty. He, not, he didn't say the God some mighty, he said the God Almighty. We look unto the hills, look unto him for our help. Uh, not to anything else unto him you know things can't save us people can't save us but God can you know Hezekiah looked unto the hills when that king was coming and harassing him didn't he King David looked unto the hills which is Jesus I'm talking about when he when he had the situation he had and he had many more situations after that but you get the point they, they all looked unto Christ Seeking Christ for strength, for encouragement, for wisdom, for guidance, for direction, for healing, and for blessing. And that's part of how you endure. But we don't seek God, if we don't cry out to God, we just be stuck. We just be stuck because uh we're not because we won't be seeking him. But the key to victory, the key to enduring unto the end, unto the victory, is seeking God crying out to God and he knows what what we have going through and he knows our needs he knows what we need and he knows when to move and he's going to move like this one brother Todd Morgan just said earlier you know don't worry about the timeline just know that he's going to move he's going to give the victory how he's going to do it when he's going to do it no worries he's going to do it so my, my conclusion here last section my conclusion would be this uh Isaiah chapter 40 pretty powerful scripture Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 to 31 Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 to 31 it says has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth faint of not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and, shall, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. First of all, telling us, hey, hey, get, get a grip. God, the everlasting Father, who made this heaven and earth, who, who, who made who made all this stuff out here, the, the trees, the plants, the mountains, the everything, the sky, the ocean, he don't faint. He don't get weary. He's, he's not the weakling. He gives us power when we faint. He gives us strength when we don't have no strength. He delivers us when we have, when there's things that come, don't that's not working out right in our lives. Uh, and he said, and, he, and, he said, and yeah, he knows that we're going to get weak sometimes. He knows we're going to fall short sometimes. But when we wait upon the Lord, I only just waiting on him like, oh, let's wait for God. When we continue to serve him and love him and worship him and seek him and have faith in him, he will renew our strength and we will march on. We will get the victory. We will, we will get those blessings in our lives, those healings, that those the new job or or this or that or where we need for Christ to provide for us, He's gonna give us the victory when we wait on Him and we continue to serve Him. When we endure and we endure unto the end, you know, we will walk and not be weary. We will run and not faint. I'm sorry, run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Excuse me, but you get you get the point. That, that's the mighty God we serve. And he's real. He's true. Psalms 30, verse 11. Psalms 30, 
Psalm chapter 30, verse 11. Thou has turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou has put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. I like that scripture. My mourning into dancing. Yeah, when we're seeking God, like if there's a hardship comes in our life and we're seeking God, praying to God about it, you know, yeah, yeah, we may have a sorrowful heart. Yeah, we may be sad and so forth, but we, we're enduring. We're doing Christ's work. And and he's going to bless us. And, and he, gonna t he turns that, and what he does, he turns that mourning into dancing. But look at Job. You know, Job had all the sores on him and he lost his family. And and guess what happened? He, he endured. He continued to serve God. He kept his integrity. And all that mourning was, all that suffering was gone. And, and he had twice, you know, you know the rest. Don't need to keep repeating it. Uh, you no, know, God could bless us that same way, and He does bless, and He has blessed us that same way many times, many occasions. We've been, might have been down in the dumps, you know, might have had afflictions or troubles come our way because of our stand for the gospel of Christ. And guess what? He delivered the, uh, us out of them. He delivered deliver us out of them all. And uh, I want to share one last scripture with y'all. I want to share one last scripture. And uh, give me a second. Actually, that was the very last scripture I wanted to share with Psalms 30, verse 11. But I want to paraphrase just one last scripture to you. It's the scripture that says, but he that sh that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that endure, endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And it said, he that endure to the end, the same uh, might might probably be saved. Might you know they might get deliverance, but uh, you know God's sometimes he, he he can't. No, it says endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be delivered. The same shall have the victory. You know, just, just talking in my own words. You know, that that shall word, that's a pretty powerful word. When we have faith in God, when we endure sound doctrine, when we endure afflictions for the word of Christ's sake, when we endure the chastening of God, God will give us the victory. I thank you all for tuning in. God bless you guys. Live from Port Townsend, Washington. Take care. God bless you and have a great night.